everybody welcome back to the channel so in this video we are going to continue with our free code camp walkthrough and in this particular one we'll be looking at css animations so what you see on your screen is what we are going to be building and it's going to be a series of 29 steps okay so let's get started once again this is what we are going to be building all right so for step one we want to begin with a standard boilerplate and as you probably know by now the way we do that is to first declare a doc type and we'll give it an attribute of html this is going to tell our browser that the document we wanted to read is an html document now next up let's add an html element like so and we are going to give this html element an attribute of lang which we are going to set to en which stands for english and then the next thing we want to do is we want to add the head and body element so let's go ahead and add a head element like so and then we also want to add a body element like so okay so for the head element we want to add a meta element for the correct chart set so we're going to say meta and then we're going to give the meta element a chart set attribute which will have a value of utf-8 we also want to give it a link and this is going to help us to link our style sheet for the css with our html okay we'll see href and let me give it this value here which is our style sheet styles.css okay so now i can come here which is our css and let me say body and let me do something like a background color let's give it green okay all right now we are sure our styles has been correctly linked to our html the next thing we want to add is a title element the title element will have a text of uh, ferris ferris wheel okay so the title element is what shows up here in the tab okay so whatever text we put into that title element is what will show up here in our tab all right so that's it for step one let's continue with step two in step two what we want to do is we want to add a div within the body this div is going to have a class let's give it a class the name of the class is going to be wheel then inside the div which we just created we want to add six span element with a class set to line and also six div element with a class set to carbon Okay, so let's go ahead and add the span element like so so each one is going to have a class of uh, a class of line so let's say line it needs to be in a quotation mark so i'll say line like this and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to use the shortcut to replicate it multiple times so i'll hold option and shift and then i'll press down if you're on windows you can hold alt and shift and then you press down so we have two three four five six all right we have six of them now let's go ahead and also create the diff so we'll say diff like so let's give it a class and set the class to carbon i'll use the same 
shortcut again holding option and shift and then i'll press down so two three four five six all right so we have six span element here we also have our six div element here okay next up let's come to our css so we're going to start by selecting the wheel element which we just created in the previous step and let's give it a border with a value of two pixels for the size let's give it solid for the style and then for the color let's give it black okay as you can see we have a black border here with us and then we also want to give it a border radius which is going to be 50 percent like so and then so as you can see the border radius makes it thin out towards the edges if you look closely you can see that when it gets into the end it sort of fades thin out all right next we want to add is a margin let's do margin left and we'll say 50 pixels okay on to the next one let's do position and position is going to have a value of absolute let's also set a height property height property of 55 view width and let's also set a width property also of 55 view width okay so now we have this height and width of our border and that gives it this circular shape okay Next up, what we want to do is we want to give the rule selector a max height property. So let's say max height. And that is going to be 500 pixels. We also want to give it a max width. So for now, if we open it like this, you can see it keeps the width keeps increasing as the size of the screen increases. But we don't want that to happen. So let's give it a max width of uh, 500 pixels okay that way when we keep expanding it gets to a point which is the 500 pixels and then it ceases to expand so it doesn't get larger again as the screen increases okay let's go on all right the next thing we want to do is we want to create a selector for the line element which we created as a reminder this span which is the line element so let's create a selector for them and then we are going to give them each a background color let's start off by giving the background color set to black let's give each one a width of 50 percent and then let's give it a height of two pixels Now still on the line, we want to set its position to absolute and then let's set the left to 50%. Okay, as you can see here, we have the position set to absolute and the left is 50%. So it pushes it away from the left of the screen by 50 percent now let's set the top also to 50 percent which will push it away from the top so we should have a line somewhere in the middle let's see what happens 50 percent all right as you can see we have this line somewhere in the middle which has been pushed away from the left and also away from the top so it's lying at the center like that now let's get into the animation so the transform origin property is used to set the point around which a css transformation 
is applied okay so for example when performing a rotate which we'll do later in this project the transform origin determines the point the element is rotated okay so let's give this line selector a transform origin property so we say transform dash origin and then we'll say zero percent and another zero percent so what does this mean this means that it will offset the origin point by zero percent from the left and also zero percent from the top setting it to the top left corner of the element all right now let's create a selector to target the second line okay so we we'll set the transform property to rotate 60 degrees all right so the way we're going to do that is we have the line I think we can use just a minute let me check something and sudo selector css sudo class yeah the end of type sudo class represents an element that has an b sibling so the expanded element name before a documentary okay so let's see let me check the mozilla okay so what i am going to do is just a moment i'm going to use the css pseudo class nth of type okay so what this will do is we are going to say dot line i'm going to say nth of type let's put into brackets we want to select the second line okay then we'll say transform property let's say rotate 60 degrees all right remember the transform property allows you to manipulate the shape of an element in this case using the rotate 60 degrees will rotate the element around a transform origin point by 60 degrees clockwise okay so let me explain a little bit of this end of type that i use so we're told to create a selector to target the second line element now when we come here we have a number of line elements but we want to select the second one so to do so we use this pseudo selector called end of type so first you write line which is the name of the class and then to select the second line we say end of type and then into bracket two okay so that's what happened all right i hope that's clear now let's continue so using the same part you want to create a separate selector for the third line the fourth line the fifth line and the sixth line okay so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to copy this or let me type it out once so i'll say line and of type three so for the third line we want to set it to uh, transform to rotate 120 degrees so let's say transform rotate let's bring our bracket 120 degrees okay so now as you can see we are building our wheel 
our ferris wheel so what i will do is i'll copy this paste it here and then i'll do four then i'll do the next rotation which is 180 again i'll paste another one here select five which is the next line and do the next rotation which is 240 degrees and then finally i'll paste another one select the sixth line and do a rotation of 300 degrees so let's do 300 degrees like so all right there we have it so our wheel is taking shape all right so this is where we will end in this video and i am going to continue in the next video where we are going to look at steps 11 to 20 in our project where we are building the ferris wheel okay so if you enjoyed this video do well to leave a like and also subscribe to the channel thanks for watching see you in the next one